everyone. We are so glad that you are here. I am just getting everyone admitted here. I know it is just about time to get started. We've got a bunch of folks joining in the waiting room here. Get it in just a minute. Great crowd today. Right. Well, I know that we will have more folks jumping in. Um, and so I, but I want to get started. I know we have an appointment um, at two o'clock. It is 2.01. Um, and we are so blessed today uh, to have Trey Hunt with us. Um, Trey has kindly agreed to join us and talk about Ford, which is a really exciting topic. We know we talk about scripting all the time here at 6Ls. We do our morning mindset and our rise and shine with script practice. And Ford is something really interesting that I'm excited to hear Trey talk about. And David has bragged um, on how great Trey is at delivering this topic. So we're just really excited everyone's here to learn about it. Um, he is a productivity coach in the Atlanta market, and he's been licensed for 13 years. Um, and he is, uh, he's been in his coaching position for the last six. Uh, he just is, um, you know, just an exceptional, uh, you know, individual knowing so much about scripting that David asked him to come and join us and talk about this. They were both together, I believe, uh, working on their certification for KW instruction, which is great as well. I'm super blessed to have uh, someone training for KW instruction here with us at 6L. So thanks everyone for joining our 6Ls training today. And Trey, I am going to turn it over to you, sir. Fantastic. And can you enable my screen sharing, Lorna? Got it, sir. It is all you. All right, let me go ahead and get my screen shared then. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for having me. And uh, I'm hoping you guys take a lot away from uh, the time we spend together today. Uh, my name's Trey Hunt. I, like Lorna said, I've been licensed for 13 years, uh, six years here in the Snellville Market Center. For those of you that don't know where Snellville is, and that's probably the majority of you, uh, that's about 15 miles east of Atlanta. Um, since I've been in this role, every single year, our Rookie of the Year has come out of our coaching program. Uh, half of our ALC started their careers with me. And at this point, when you look at the top 20% of agents in our office, and uh, we're well over 300 agents in our office now, um, a third of our top 20% started with me. So enough about me. Hopefully that gives me a little bit of credibility, a little bit of value. Uh, so you guys will listen in today. Uh, what I want to cover today is I want to start talking about why is your database so important? Because when we talk about the Ford conversation, these are typically going to be conversations that we're having with our database. Um, I'm going to take a look at some data from the, uh, the NAR survey of buyers and sellers so that we understand why talking to our database is so important. Uh, talk about the best strategy to, to reach ready clients. And then how do we use Ford effectively? What, what do those conversations look like? I'm going to give you a, a structure today, less of a script and more of a structure for conversations uh, that hopefully will be beneficial. So starting out, why is talking to your database so important? Well, I want you guys to consider as, as you're looking to build your real estate business, instead of thinking of it as building a real estate business, I want you to think of it as you're building a swimming pool full of money, okay? So if we're building a swimming pool full of money, how big do you want your swimming pool to be? Huge. Big, right? Huge. It's huge, right? Huge. Exactly. Well, what's gonna determine the size of your swimming pool is a few simple factors. The, the length of your swimming pool is gonna be determined by the number of contacts that you have in your database, okay? Pretty simple. The more people we have uh, in our world, the, the bigger our pool is going to be. The, the second factor, what's going to determine the width of our pool, is the quality of the information that we have with them. 
And, and what I mean by that, Bethany, if uh, all I know is your name and your email address, how good of friends are we likely to ever be? Not, not great. Not very good chances of it ever going anywhere beyond name and email. But if I know your name, your phone number, your email address, your physical address, that you own your house, you've got two kids, we have a better chance probably of building a relationship, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh. That was almost spot on, Trey. That was pretty good. I do have two kids. <laughs> Fantastic. So, and, and then the last factor and, and the one that I, I think is so often overlooked is what's going to determine the depth of the pool is the quality of the relationships, the depth of the relationships that we build, okay? Th does that make sense to everybody? Okay, and, and it's one thing for Trey to say it, it's one thing for you to hear, that this reason I wanted to bring the data in is so you guys realize just how important this one factor, the quality of the relationship is. Because how fun would it be swimming in a pool that was, uh, 50 feet long, 20 feet wide, and three inches deep. Not going to be very fun, right? The same thing is going to be true in our business. So as we go looking at the data, NAR just released their 2022 data um, in the last three or four weeks. And, and going through that, I pulled out some gems in there that were really relevant today. And, and the first one was, how does a buyer find their real estate agent? And when you look at a couple of these key numbers in here, you, what you'll find is 56% of people that bought a home, the way they found their agent is they were already in a relationship with that agent or they were referred by someone that was in a relationship with that agent. Okay, 56%. Is that a big number or a small number? It's a big number, right. Anything else, any other way for someone to find their agent is a distant, distant second place, okay? We look at open houses, 3%. They walked into the office, 2%. They found you on social media, 1%, okay? It's the relationship is the number one way. So we, we tend to be attracted as agents to shiny objects, right? We, we always want to try that something new. We're looking for that easy button. Well, understand the easy button is the people that you're already connected with. Okay. We just have to do more to build relationships with them. When we look at what were the things that were most important to them when they were deciding which agent to use, I, I want you to pay attention to a few of these really in particular. Your experience, honest and trustworthy your reputation, they, they have a caring personality or a good listener, uh, is a friend or family member, okay? How likely are we to convey all of that information in, in a three-minute phone call or in a 15-minute buyer presentation, right? If, if we have a relationship with people, we are in an active relationship, are these things that not show up? You know, who are the people you think most are honest and trustworthy? It's the people you know in your world, right? You, you don't usually give that title to a stranger. Does that make sense? Okay. So if these are the things that they're looking for, our best way to convince them to use us is to build a relationship with them. And you're going to see a common theme. We're going to talk about relationship over and over again. When they look at the skills and the qualities that are most important to them, again, these are all things that show up in relationships. If we're in a relationship, they're going to see us as being honest. They're going to know how responsive we are. They're going to understand our ability to communicate well, and they're going to feel like we have good people skills. Those were all key things that they were looking for in a real estate agent. Uh, this is kind of a bonus slide that I wanted to throw in here. This is going to show up a little bit later, but I found it really interesting that most buyers, it took them 10 weeks to do their home search. The first three weeks they did on their own without an agent. Okay. And my question to you is, why do you think that is? 
that they spent three weeks searching on their own. Does anybody have a guess? They didn't know who to call. <clears throat> I, I, I agree with you, Felicia. I think that's the reason. They didn't have somebody in their world that they trusted enough to help them from the start. Okay. I, I don't have the data and don't know that's the reason, but that's the only logical reason that I could come up with is they didn't have somebody in their world that they had a close enough relationship with that they wanted to engage with them from day one, okay? They started the process, and when it came to the point where they needed to get in and actually look at a house, that's when they started looking for a real estate agent, okay? I think if we did a better job as real estate agents building relationships with our people and staying in their lives on a continual basis, we would see that three week period drop to nothing. So what about sellers? What about the other side? Uh, same thing you're gonna find. Uh, when we look at the data, the number's actually bigger on the seller side, okay? And, and I think that's with very valid reason because is the, the seller relationship a higher trust or lower trust relationship than the buyer relationship? I think it's a higher right? People are putting their, their, their property at risk. They're bringing people into their home. Uh, they're worried about the equity in their home. They're worried about the time it's going to take. They want to make sure they have somebody in their world that they can trust. And so even more than buyers, they want to work with somebody that they are already in a relationship with and trust or were referred to them by someone that they're in a relationship OK, so 68 percent of sellers, the way that they found their agent, they were in a relationship or were referred by the relationship. Again, everything else is a distant second. And, and actually what I found interesting, the, the next most popular way for them to find their agent was a cold call. That's surprising. What's to me? So most important factors, again, very similar on the buyer side. They're looking at the reputation of the agent, the agent's honest and trustworthy, the agent's a friend or a family member, the agent has a caring personality or a good listener. Even as a brand new agent, are you able to meet that with your people? Yeah, they're not asking how good of a negotiator you are, or how many years of experience you have. They don't care which broker or brand that you're attached to. For sellers, it's all about the relationship. And so that, that becomes the challenge for us. How do we build that relationship? So the bonus slide here on the seller side, 80% of sellers met with one real estate agent. Is that significant? Yeah. If we can be the first one through the door, what's the likelihood of us getting the listing? It's massive, right? Okay. Well, what's the easiest way for us to be in their world when they're ready to make that decision? And it's to have a continuous relationship all along the way. You know, I don't care if they want to talk to other real estate agents, just meet with me first. Boom, 80% chance that it's going to be me. Okay. So what's the best strategy to find ready clients? And, and this is kind of going to be a rehash. It's another way of looking at what we've already talked about but I want you to think about the, the, the time period in between sales, okay, and, and what it looks like. So we, we've got a graph here that over time, we, we bought a house, and the day after we buy a house, how likely are you to buy another house? Way down here at the bottom, right? Most people don't buy two houses back to back, right? So, so that drops off, and then over some period of time, the likelihood we're going to buy another house keeps going up and up and up until we finally make that decision. It's time to buy a new house. Well, agents uh, spend tons of money every single year paying for leads. There, there are prop tech companies out there that are spending millions and millions of dollars trying to develop technology to predict when's that little magic moment right before someone's going to buy a house. Okay. So is that, is that a good strategy? Just trying to get into people's worlds 
right at that little magic moment, okay? Because that's really a tiny target to hit, right? If, if somebody's less than three months from moving into their house, is there an opportunity for us? Pro probably not at that point. You know, we just saw they were searching for a house for seven weeks with an agent. OK, so in those last two months, it's too late. They've already signed a buyer's brokerage agreement with somebody. We're, we're, we're too late to the table. And, and if it's more than six months, they may not even know that they're moving yet. They may not have gotten those divorce papers or, or that shiny, pretty diamond ring. They may not have found out that they were pregnant or gotten that new job. You know, those are the big drivers for why somebody makes a move. And very often they have no idea that eight months from now, 12 months from now, I'm going to be moving. So, so we've got this tiny little window that we want to hit and make sure we're in their world in that three to six month period. Well, where in the life cycle is that three to six month period? The, the, the NAR data tells us that the median timeline is 10 years between purchases. Okay. But I want you guys to look at this. 10% sell between two and three years. 13% between four and five. 12% between six and seven. 13% uh, between 11 and 15. How do we know when they're gonna sell? You know, hitting that little tiny target is so hard. So Gary Keller tells us in the shift book that you can't know or predict when they'll come to a decision. But if you're reconnecting with them in a systematic way, you'll have a great chance of being there when they do. And that's when you'll be able to close for an appointment. And, and that's just the, the biggest takeaway I want you guys to have from this is that the easiest way to make sure we're in their world right here is we get in their world somewhere back here. And we stay in constant, constant contact throughout this whole time period that they have their home ownership. And, and this is gonna continue after they buy that home to the next one and after they buy that home. Once somebody comes into our world, when should they leave? Never, right? We, we wanna have clients for life, okay? The, the other problem with trying to hit this little target and get into their world right at that one little moment is, is what opportunities are we missing all along here? Referrals. Referrals. Yeah. If, if somebody is in their house for 10 years and I'm in a relationship with them for 10 years, if I could just get one referral from them every single year, what sort of commission income is that for you? Okay, I don't know what your average income is where you're at, but for us, it, it's right around uh, $10,000 here in the Atlanta market is, is our average. You know, that's potentially $100,000 of income that you've missed out on because you didn't think it was important to stay in a relationship throughout their whole time of home ownership. And we were only cared about getting into their world in that three to six month window when they were ready to make a purchase, okay? I'd rather have all the referrals and not have this sale than have this sale and none of the referrals. What about you? Same, yeah, oh, thought so. So, and, and Gary's always told us that, that the way to success in the business is you build a database, you feed it every day, you communicate with it systematically, and you service all the leads that come its way. Well, well the two places that, that agents seem to struggle the most is the build a database. They, they don't ever put their people in there. They don't get started with the database. Hopefully you're all there already and you have a database that you're working from. If you don't, today's the day that you need to start that. Embrace the technology, get your people in there, okay? And start living inside your database. But the second place they struggle is that communicate systematically. I, I don't know what to say. You know, I, I call them every three months. What does that conversation look like? And, and that's where we're leading today is, is I'm hoping to make those conversations of staying in somebody's life a lot easier for you today.
Um, you've always heard about the 19, uh, the Kadek 36 uh, to convert, you, 36 touch campaign. Is, have you guys heard that? Yes, I see a few nodding heads. Okay, um, Gary tells us that of all of these contacts, the ones that are the most important are the phone calls. He said, if you're only gonna do one thing, make the four phone calls, talk to them once a quarter and forget all the rest, okay? That's how important that the phone calls are. It's really easy for us to let our technology uh, set them up on a drip campaign so they're getting an email all the time, but is it always easy to pick up the phone and make that phone call? That's, that's the more challenging part, right? That, that's the one that takes more time to do. So hopefully we're gonna make it a little bit easier. And, and, and I wanted to bring Ford in and introduce Ford to you. It, it, and probably if any of you heard of it, uh, hopefully you're gonna be seeing this in a little different way today than you've seen it before. Because one of the big challenges for me is I've never been really big on scripts. And agents have different philosophies on scripts. There's some that love scripts. They live and die by scripts. I believe that there's jewels and there's valuable information in those scripts. But to me, it's always been a challenge because the person on the other end of the phone, they don't know their lines. So I call them up and I'm like, hey, it's Trey, how are you doing? And they're like, not so well. My, my grandmother died yesterday and I read the next line. That's great to hear. That's not a very good phone conversation, right? Okay. They don't know how the conversation is supposed to go. So I get lost on my pay. So what, what I found is Ford is a really way, a good way to structure a conversation that gives us a lot of freedom to be ourselves but still gives us a targeted conversation to have. It's a very intentional conversation, uh, but it doesn't feel intentional, uh, especially to the person on the other end of the phone. So if you haven't heard of Ford before, it's family, occupation, recreation, and dreams, okay? And what these are, these are just really good topics for us to come back to if we're ever struggling in a conversation uh, with our sphere. So when you, and what I want you to think about is when you talk to your family and you talk to your friends, what are the things you guys talk about? Somebody come off of a mute and tell me, what are the things you talk to your friends about? Just their life. Family. What's going on in life, right? Like just small talk. Yeah, How the kids. How are the kids. Kids, vacation. How, how are things going at work? What are you doing for Christmas, right? All of those types of things get in here. That's what I want you guys to understand is the idea here is we want to talk to everybody like we're talking to our friends, okay? We want to make everybody our friends. That, that's how we succeed. But if I don't have a really good conversation or, well, how does talking to someone about their family and their job, how does that help me sell houses? Okay, well, let's look at the recipe for a Ford sandwich. Okay, this is mama's original recipe for building businesses through personal relationships. And it's a really simple recipe that starts out with a garnish. It's that friendly intro. Okay, and this is whatever's comfortable to you. So when you pick up that phone and you call your friend, you call your family member, you call your associate, your past coworker, how would you talk normally? If, if you say hi, say hi. If you say hello, say hello. If, if you're stuck in the year 2000 and, and your phone calls start with what's up, that's perfectly okay. All right, you've gotta be yourself, all right? Um, and, and understand here, when you call your mom, do you start the conversation with, hey, mom, it's Trey Hunt with Keller Williams? No, right? So, so don't feel like you have to include your title in that conversation. Remember, we're calling our friends. Let's talk to them about like we talk to our friends, okay? Hey, how's it going? It's perfectly okay for the conversation. You may need to, depending on who it is, 
you may need to qualify it. Hey, it's Trey from your bowling league. How are you doing? That's perfectly okay. They don't know you through Keller Williams or, or whoever your broker is. They know you from church. They know you because uh, your kids play soccer together. Okay. Make the connection for them and make it really easy to continue the conversation. Okay. And then we're going to move into Ford and we're going to ask them about what's going on in their world. You know, so how are you doing? How is family? Uh, anything interesting going on at work? And, and understand, I don't have to hit every single one of these topics. This is not like a checklist. This is just conversation starters. OK, it, it can be timely. Um, it, it could be friendly. It could be funny. Uh, now's a super easy time of the year because of the holidays. You know, just asking them, hey, are, are you guys stay at home for the holidays or are you traveling out of state? The idea is we want to get a conversation started with them and we want to connect with them on some sort of a personal level. This is a this is a relationship building conversation. OK, does that does that make sense with everybody so far? All right. So I, I want to point out now this is the first place in this conversation where something magical might happen, okay? If I'm talking to someone about their family, about their occupation, their recreation, their dreams, what's this the perfect opportunity for me to discover? If they're playing a movie. Future needs. Yeah, well, and see, you guys are stuck in real estate mode, in sales mode. This is relationship mode. Now I want to tie it back to real estate, but I'm not talking to them about real estate. I'm talking to them about their life. What are the things about their life that I want to know? Yeah, that's important to them. What's important to them? Sure. Not going to screw that. But what about they got a new job? Yeah, I would say you need life changes that are happening. Any life changes. That is exactly right. This is the time when you find out somebody just got engaged, their, their youngest kid just left for college and they're an empty nester now. Um, they're uh, uh, um, planning a vacation there. They just got back from a vacation at the beach, okay? And just absolutely loved it down there. What might we be talking to them about? Vacation home, second home. Investment properties. So investment properties, absolutely. The, this is the time where we can we can identify a, a potential need now or sometime in the near future because we get to know what's going on in their world. They may not even be thinking real estate yet because they're they just sent their kid off to college. Are they thinking it's time to downsize yet? No, but six months from now or 12 months from now, when the house is feeling empty and way too big, is that going to be something we want to revisit with them? Yeah, absolutely. All right. But even if we don't discover something unique in their life, because does everybody have a big life event going on when we call them? No. Well, we, we've got to find some way to slide a piece of meat into the conversation. We want to bring real estate in at some point in every conversation we have. And, and understand when I say bring real estate in here, this is not, are you thinking about buying, selling, or investing in real estate? Okay. If every time I called you, the conversation was, are you thinking about buying, selling, or investing? Are you thinking about buying or selling or investing? Are you thinking about buying or selling or investing? Are you thinking about buying or selling or investing? What's going to happen? They're going to stop answering the phone. <laughs> They're going to stop answering their phone. That is exactly right. And, and that question, does that tell them that they are important to me any more than the commission that I'm going to make? No, it doesn't help build the relationship. So in a second, we're going to unpack some other ways of how do I bring real estate into the conversation? Would that be valuable? Good, all right. Uh, but that is the second place that something magical can happen. And you're gonna see this in a second when we give some examples. 
But if I'm just able to introduce real estate, and, and I know most of you have had this happen at some point, when somebody finds out you're in real estate, what oftentimes happens? Does anybody ever get the question what's going on in the market? Or, hey, let me ask you a question. Hey, I was thinking about, okay, I, I didn't ask them to buy, sell, or invest. All that happened was they were, they discovered or were reminded that I'm in real estate. If, if it's on their mind, they will bring it up. They will explore it. They will want to unpack that farther, okay? And then we're going to bring it back and we're going to close it out with Ford. So we're going to take it back to a personal relationship. OK, and, and that could be really simple. And, and we're going to walk through some examples of what this may look like here in just a second. But having now had this conversation and, and, and closed the conversation out, hung up the phone. This is the third time when something magical might happen. OK. And this is, if I've had a conversation with you, Mike, uh, Rister, I don't know how many mics are on here. That's a pretty common name. So you and I talked this week, this week, and real estate came up in the conversation. Didn't unpack it, but I just reminded you that I'm here to help you if you ever need me. And, and you run into someone that is thinking about buying or selling, a, a friend or a family member. What happened, you and I talking this week, to the odds that you're going to remember to refer me. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It, it goes mind. Yep. It's top of mind. It goes <laughs> up. Okay. But I had to have that reminder in there that I'm in real estate. So what are some ways that we can bring real estate into the conversation? The, does anybody struggle with this? How do I how do I talk about real estate without it being salesy? So I, I know in coaching, this is like one of the most common questions that I get is, well, how do, how do I talk about real estate? What do I let them know? Okay, well, I, I want to give you some easy ways to do it. One is, is be prepared to let it happen naturally. And what I mean by that is, if I call my friend or my family member and I ask them, how are you doing? How are the family? How are the kids? What are they likely to ask me? How's the real estate business? Well, I haven't even brought real estate up. I, they may ask me how I'm doing. Mm. They may ask me, how are the kids doing? You know, it, it could be absolutely anything. But if I'm asking them about their world, they're going to ask me about my world. And I don't care what the question is that they ask me. What did they just give me permission to talk about? Real estate, right? You ask me how I'm doing, okay? Don't just say fine. Have a real estate answer for that. Actually, I'm really excited about 2023. It is such an interesting time to be in real estate. And I'm really curious to see what happens next year. I'm done talking about real estate for the whole conversation. Unless they want to ask me, well, what do you mean it's an interesting time in real estate? Or, well, I've been hearing things aren't so good on the news with real estate. Um, what, what's got you so excited? Okay. I didn't have to explore it. I didn't have to force it into the conversation. I, I just let it happen naturally. Is that pretty easy to do? Okay, but, but understand, I've got to be prepared for that, right? If, if I don't have a little tiny script, the little one word or, or one sentence, little way to introduce it, and, and very often that changes with the marketplace. You know, if, if you had uh, asked me how I'm doing seven months ago, I would have told you, man, I'm having the time of my life. This is the most interesting time to be in real estate ever because sellers are getting absolute top dollar for their, for their properties and buyers are still getting record low interest rates. It's crazy. Okay, I'm done talking about real estate. Can I use that same script today? 
say no. <laughs> no, we don't have record low interest rates anymore, right? And, and our sellers getting top, top dollar for their listings, you know, not like they were before, right? So, so understand, let this be timely. And, and there may be times where um, uh, there may be something going on specific in your market that you wanna share. Um, it could be some event that you have going on or you have planned. I'm, I'm super excited, you know, coming up in two weeks, we've got our big client event party and we're having all of our past real estate clients come and visit. And we've got a lot of planning, going to be a ton of fun. So looking forward to that. Okay. So just come up with what's my script going to be today or this week or this month, if I'm going to let it happen naturally. Okay. Second way that I can bring real estate into the conversation is ask for help. Okay. And depending on where you're at and where you work, there's, there's tons of ways that you can ask for help. Okay. It could be as simple as, uh, hey, Ryan, how are you doing? How are the family? How are the kids? Uh, you staying home for Christmas this year? You going out of state? Hey, listen, while I've got you on the phone, I was hoping I could get a little help from you. I've been working on my vendor list and I realized I don't have a really good pressure washer or a gutter guy. Do you happen to have one of those in your world? Because, you know, I frequently have clients of mine asking me for help around the house or, or we need something done to get a transaction completed. It would be really helpful if you knew one of them. Is that is that difficult for him? Have I put Ryan on the spot asking him that in the same way that I do asking, are you thinking about buying or selling? Yeah. Now, but does he know that I'm in real estate now? Yeah. And, and you know what? He has the opportunity to be the hero of the story if he knows somebody. OK. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, in, in other ways, we can ask for help. It may be, you know, hey, listen, uh, uh, Andy, I've, I've got a uh, an app that that I've just started using and, and a lot of my clients are really enjoying it. I would really love your feedback on it. If, if I text you uh, my app where you can go download it, would you take a look at it this week and let me call you next week and see what you thought about it? Because before I send it out to everybody I know, I'd really like to have feedback from a few of the people that I really trust. Okay. It could be that I've uh, updated my website and want somebody's feedback. Okay. Um, it could be um, other ways that they can help me. Um, uh, if they would share one of my social media posts that, that I've got an event coming up, a first time home buyer seminar, would you go to my Facebook page and just share that post so that anybody that's thinking about a first time home buyer seminar, um, I'm not asking them to come to the seminar. I'm not asking them to commit to anything else. Just will you share that post for me and help me get the word out about the event? Okay. Is that easy to do? Are they reminded that I'm in real estate? And did it help build the relationship? All of those are wins for us, right? The third one would be offer something of value. Okay. And, and there, this could be a lot of different things. Um, your broker, I know some of you are with Keller Williams. Are, are there some tools that Keller Williams gives you guys that are good things to offer in terms of value? Could be your app, could be your website, okay? Could, could be some of the connections that we have. You, you could tie this back to one that we had just a minute ago. Um, great, great offer of value. Uh, hey, David, it's Trey with Keller Williams. How are you doing? How are the family? How are the kids? Hey, listen, before I let you go, uh, I'm, I'm always hoping that when you get ready to sell your house, you're going to call me, but you're probably not going to think of me when you need a new roof or need a plumber around the house. And I just wanted to remind you, I've got a lot of businesses in my world that, that I have relationships with and that I trust. Um, and so if you're ever looking for a contractor around the house and you don't know who to call, 
call me because I'll introduce you to somebody that will take as good of care of you as I would. Would that be helpful? Again, same thing. Never put them on the spot. It wasn't a sales call. Did I remind them I'm in real estate? Did I help build the relationship there? Okay. Other things of value. Could be getting them signed up on your newsletter. Could be getting them on a monthly neighborhood report. So they're seeing what's going on. Those things are, are of value. Uh, what about at the uh, in the spring when tax assessments come out? You know, what if you were to call the, the people in your database that you know are homeowners? You know, hey, it's Trey, how are you doing? How are the family? How are the kids? Hey, listen, while I've got you on the phone, Gwinnett County is going to be sending out their tax assessments in the next couple of weeks. So what I want you to do, be watching your mailbox. And when that comes, don't just throw it in the stack with everything else. Go ahead and open that up. And if you don't think it's been assessed fairly, give me a call and let me pull the data you need to challenge it. And maybe we can save you some money on your taxes this year. Would that be helpful? Okay. If I could save you $300 on your taxes this year, whether you bought a house from me or not, what do you think of me as a realtor? What do you think about how I think about you? Am I just concerned about the commission I'm going to make on the sale of your house? Or do I really care about you? Yeah, it's going above and beyond after the sale. And I think that's what uh, people value that. Absolutely. So, so look for opportunities. You know, there, there's going to come a time here in the next couple of years that, that interest rates are going to have come down enough that people that bought houses right now need to be refinancing. You know, those are going to be great conversations to have with them, reaching back out. Hey, I know you bought your house. Doesn't matter if they used me or not, right? Okay. It, it could be that I was on the other side of the transaction even. Uh, reach out to those people and say, hey, I, I know you bought the house a couple of years ago. Didn't know if you realized or not, but the interest rates have come down enough that it might make sense for you to refinance your house right now. Do, do you have a lender that you trust to talk to about it? Or would you like me to introduce you to one? Okay. If you can refinance your house and save a couple of hundred dollars a month, again, what do you think of me? What do I get out of it? I don't make a dime out of that, right? But what does it tell them about how I feel about them? And what does that do to build the relationship? Pretty magical, right? All right. And the last one, it's perfectly okay every once in a while to directly ask them for referrals or business. Okay. Just don't make that every single phone call. So, and now's a great time to make those asking for their business phone calls, you know, really simple. Hey, as we're closing out the year, I'm working on putting together my projections for 2023. And I just wanted to talk to all the people in my world and find out, did you have any real estate plans for next year? I could be direct. It's okay. I just don't want to do that in every single call that I have. And then as far as referrals go, I want you guys to think a little bit differently about asking for referrals. Um, because if I were to ask you, who do you know that's thinking about buying or selling? Okay. And that's the common line that, that agents use when we talk about referrals. But when do most people start talking to their friends and family about them buying or selling a home? They usually start talking about it once they're already in the process, right? We've lost that opportunity. When do we want to get into people's worlds? Before they're talking to a real estate agent. So start asking people to be introduced to people that are going through certain life events. Okay. And, and here at the end of the year, you know, and talk, talk to some of your people before you get off the phone. Hey, as we're, we're closing out this year, the January is a time when a lot of people change jobs. So if there's anybody you know that's changing jobs in January, I'd love to be introduced to them because there's a good likelihood they're going to have a real estate need at the same time. Is that something you can do for me? 
you know, in the spring. Uh, hey, if anybody you know is getting engaged, you know, uh, going to be getting married in the in the summer, uh, I'd love to meet them. Love to be introduced to them because they're going to have questions about housing that, that I would love to be there to help them for. Okay. Do you, do you guys see how that's a very different request for a referral than who do you know this thing about buying or selling? And, and that's the question that they'll remember that. If somebody says that they're thinking about buying or selling, for many people that really doesn't register, that's just life goes on, right? But somebody's getting married, somebody's having a baby, right? Somebody had a job, somebody had a death in the family. Those are things that people talk about. They post up on their social media, okay? And, and we're going to hear about. Um, and so clo kind of closing this out and giving you that example, you know, the friendly intro, hi, how are you doing? Uh, what's going on? Keep it really casual, whatever's comfortable for you, okay? Talk about Ford. And, and if you're struggling with some people to have this Ford conversation, I'll give you another little tip. Go stalk them on Facebook. Go go pull their Facebook page up and say, you know, hey, how are you doing? How's it? Hey, I saw you guys just got back from vacation at such and such. What was that like? What was your favorite thing? Okay. Use that as, as an impetus for the conversation and, and to kind of drive that and get them to open up. We're going to move that into real estate using any one of those strategies. Okay. We just want real estate in the conversation in some way um, so that they're reminded and we have that presence of mind. Because remember, remember, we're going to call them again in three months. And, and hopefully they're getting some emails in between from us. Maybe they're getting a couple of texts. But we want to have that one good conversation because that's our real relationship builder is our, our emails are reminding them that we're in real estate. But are they building the relationship? Probably not, right? It's this, the phone call that's building the relationship. So remember, the majority of this phone call is relationship. Real estate's just a little snippet that we've slid in there, okay? Unless they've got more questions. As soon as they start asking questions, conversation's over. I'm in sales mode, right? And, and what am I thinking as soon as they start asking questions about real estate? Is, is I need to be thinking, ask for the appointment. My objective for the conversation just changed 100%. When I make the phone call, my objection was build the relationship. As soon as I found out there was an interest or a need, my objective became get the appointment. Does that pivot make sense to you guys? All right. So... Key things I really wanted you guys to take away from today is this is a relationship business. It's relationship, relationship, relationship. If you guys will embrace that, there, there's no limit to the success that you can have. And, and I want you to know, it makes this the single best job in the world because the way we make money and the way we succeed is by making friends and by talking to our friends. That's a pretty cool job, right? We make money by making friends and getting to talk to our friends every day. So guys, that, that is it for me, but I am really curious about what you heard today that uh, resonated and was meaningful to you. What ahas do you have? Yeah, I love it, uh, Trey. I, um... You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a big believer. I, I run my business very similar to this. I always uh, like to think of it as um, lead generating for relationships, not necessarily, you know, lead generating for real estate, but just lead, lead generating to get into a relationship with somebody. So um, I did love that. Um, one thing I, I, I also found is uh, sometimes you can work the whole system backwards. It, like sometimes you can call like an internet lead and use that, hey, this is right. I just want to give you a call about your home search you know, how's, how's everything going and kind of go into the Ford conversation that way. So, sure. so use the Ford conversation to go to real estate. And sometimes you can use that real estate to go back into the Ford conversation in order to further nurture them better along the way. Yeah. Cause, cause we've got to build that trust with them and, and we've got to demonstrate those qualities 
that they're looking for. And that, that comes through relationships. Now, that's very good, Ryan. Who else? What did you hear today? Trey, one of the very practical things that you mentioned that I know that I'm going to I'm going to take and and be more intentional to apply is I like how you how you talked about that uh, when how how real estate comes up um, instead of when somebody asks, you know, hey, how are you or, you know, what's going on, being able to reciprocate that with something real estate related that makes it a more natural progression. So I really like I really like that that and I'm going to try to use that myself absolutely love that thank you felicia anybody else wanted to add anything yeah. like you just came off yeah that was i was gonna say the same thing and uh also like uh asking for their advice i really like that um because it, it makes them feel good so yeah no all right. Well, fantastic. Well, Lorna, I'm going to turn it back over to you unless there's anything that, that you'd like me to add or, or have to oh, That's just fantastic, Trey. We are so grateful to have you here today. I'm, I know we have some notes in the chat. Folks are just really appreciating <laughs> uh, everything that you shared with us. I know um, Natalie mentioned she loves the sandwich and that she loves to make friends. So this is perfect for her. Um, I know Natalie well, so that's fantastic. Mike said, thank you. Um, and Tina in Atlanta said she's in Atlanta um, and great job. So um, hopefully you guys will get to connect as well. Excellent. Um, I am going to just quickly um, share my screen with you all. I just want to remind you um, that we have great resources at 6L. So, of course, you can visit our Facebook page and our Eventbrite page to get access to more events and more tools and resources. We are so grateful for Trey joining us today, um, being part of 6L's. Um, and talking about Ford and how to build your database and grow those relationships. It is so critical to what we do. Um, and I know he added such great value today. We have more events coming up tomorrow. Uh, we have our open house master class. Uh, we are really excited about that with Phil Kingsley. So make sure to sign up for that. Visit our Eventbrite page and jump in. Uh, and we will see you for more events as well next week. Thank you so much, Trey. We appreciate it. Thank you, Lorna. Thank you, everybody, for your attention today. Have a great day, everybody.